Do you know who, Amelia? Uh, one person I got an email from, uh, Stephanie Shepard, Jackie Shepard, Jackie Shepard. Maybe we could ask them if they're on. I think we did that once before. People say hello, so we know who's listening. <laughs> I can see the attendees. And if you guys click on your participants tab, you might be able to see it as well. Um, but right now, so it's Jackie, Vicky Macrides, and Cece Ganeconto. Where, where, what do we click on? Um, at the bottom of your screen on the participants. Yeah. And then, I don't know if you can see panelists and attendees, two different lists. Yeah, yeah. So, so attendees? Yeah. So attendees are here. They're watching us live right now. Great. Okay. Um, and, and I can unmute them at any point that the chair uh, decides. So Jenny, you can start whenever you would like. Okay, so Katie, I have to read this entire thing. Is that right? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, okay, as a preliminary matter, this is Jennifer Howard Schroeder. I am a member of the uh, Human Rights Committee of Needham. Permit, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Amelia Klein? Yes. Uh, Jared Pizzuto? Yes. Julie Venables? Yes. I am not seeing any other Human Rights Committee members yet on the call. Um, good evening, everybody. This open meeting of the Needham Human Rights Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a public ex publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of this meeting. This meeting is a webinar and will allow the public to comment. For this meeting, the Needham Human Rights Committee is convening by Zoom app as hosted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided to the members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Um, Meeting business ground rules. We are now going to turn to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, per per permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. For items with public comment, after the members have spoken, the chair will afford the public comment as follows. The chair will open the item for public comments by raising of the electronic raise hand. For those participating by computer, the raise hand option can be found by clicking the participants button at the bottom of the screen. It will bring up options to choose, select the raised hand. For those participating by mobile device, click the more button at the bottom right and select raised hand. The chair will call on each raised hand in the order received. Please identify yourself by name and address. You will be afforded, afforded up to three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Okay, um, I see that there are a couple of more members. Um, hold on. 
Um, Ashok, can you just affirmatively respond that you are here present with, um, with us tonight? Yeah, this is Ashok and I'm here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and I also see Cynthia Ganung. Cynthia, could you please affirmatively state your name and that you're here? Cynthia Ganung, I am here. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. Okay. Jen, if I could interrupt, I see mm -hmm. Tina Burgos and Christine Dedick in the attendees. Okay. Should I move them over to panelists? I'm assuming they're HRC members. Tina is, um, okay. and Chris, Christine maybe might Sophie might be using like maybe that's her mom's account okay. or something. Let's see. Christine, you can speak, I believe. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi, Tina. How are you? Okay, um, Tina, would you just state your name and affirmatively that you are here tonight, please? Uh, Tina Burgos here. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sophie, could you just state your name and that you are affirmatively here in the Zoom meeting with us tonight? Um, Sophia Dedek, I'm here. Thank you so much. Um, so now, Katie, do we have the, um, the folks that are coming in for public participation in at this point? There are three attendees, so if anyone would like to speak, if they can raise their hands electronically, I can let you know. So can, so can they hear us now? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so Jackie has raised her hand. Okay. And um, Jackie, you should be unmuted now. I can't see myself on that grid. It's like I'm not here. I don't see your face either, Jackie. I, I just moved you over. Bear with me. <laughs> this is my name anyway. If you, you should have the ability to turn your video on now. Um, Look on the bottom. Yeah. That was what, I wasn't initially I was going to speak. I was really wanting to be listening. Okay. Um, do, do Cece or Vicki want to speak tonight? No one's raising their hand. Okay. Um, Jackie, just for housekeeping, if you don't mind, I'm actually just going to move you back over and we'll just have the members of the um, Human Rights Committee up on the video, but you'll still be able to hear and raise your hand if you want to participate. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, well, thanks, everybody. <sighs> um, it seems like that there's a lot to talk about. I appreciate you all making the time to come in um, to the meeting tonight. Uh, I want to start by officially welcoming Tina, because I don't think, Tina, that you were able to make it to, I think the night that we had our last um, formal meeting that you were being, um, I think you were meeting with the select board or something. So welcome. Oh, uh, yes, I'm really not. Thank you. Thank <laughs> uh, you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, joining. We're really, really happy to have you. Um, why don't we go around, maybe just everybody could uh, say their name and um, kind of like what your history is here with the committee, um, just so Tina can get a sense of who all is here. Um, Julie, you want to start? Sure. Um, Julie Venables. I have been on the committee for two years, about. Um, joined, yeah, I joined shortly after the election, <laughs> as many people <laughs> did. Um, I have two young kids trying to kind of help form the town I want to see for them and that's why I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Jared? Hi, I'm Jared. Uh, I'm a student at the high school. I'll be a senior. Um, and I think it's been a year and a half, maybe two, um, that I've been on this committee, just as um, Ben's son, Matt, was on the committee, and he asked me if I wanted to join when he went to college. And it's something that I'm really interested in. Um, so I thought it'd be great to join. Thanks, Jared. Ashok? Hi, I'm Ashok. I've been a Needham resident for over 20 years, and I've been with New Human Rights Committee for over six years now. I have two grown up kids, but we are empty nesters now. Amelia? 
Hi, Amelia Klein, and welcome, Tina. Thank you. Um, I have been on the committee BC uh, 19 <laughs> before COVID 19, actually 10 years, uh, about 10 years on the committee. I'm a resident, obviously. Um, my background is education, teacher education, so uh, a lot of the activities that we plan is something that I'm very interested in doing, and of course, human rights. And um, I want to say during the 10 years, I've had wonderful colleagues, and we have done a lot together. This is a very important committee, so um, welcome. Great. Thank you. Uh, Cynthia? I've been involved with the Human Rights Committee around the same amount of time as Amelia, and it's been exciting to see the growth in involvement of the Human Rights Committee with uh, different groups in town, and now with having um, Katie King, uh, the Assistant Town Manager, being at our meetings. It's, it's I think, um, an opportunity for closer involvement. I uh, have had an experience, really good opportunity to be part of the Needham Interfaith Clergy Association as a representative of Quakers in Needham and have been representing them on the Human Rights Committee along with one of our previous members who we who retired, who uh, we very much miss, uh, Abdul Qadir Asmo. And I'm also involved with a number of other groups, such as the, the um, Immigration Justice Task Force and the, uh, along with Amelia, the Diversity Initiative. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for groups to work together. Great. And I saw that um, another member uh, just hopped on in the nick of time. Marlene, would you just state your full name and affirmatively that you are here tonight for this meeting? Yes, Marlene Schultz. I am here. I'm so happy that I could make it. <laughs> we're glad you're here. Um, Marlene, we were just going around and kind of introducing ourselves to Tina a little bit. Do you want to tell Tina a little bit about your history with the committee? Sure. Um, hi, Tina and Sophia, because I've never met either of you before. Very nice to, nice to meet you. And if you already did your intro, I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so I actually was on the very first uh, Human Rights Committee in Needham in the 90s, and uh, the Human Rights Committee was started um, around fair housing, which is when a lot of them in a lot of different towns um, were. And I, I was on the committee in the beginning, and then I moved away from Needham, and I moved to Cambridge, and I was on the Human Rights Commission um, in Cambridge, um, where we did a lot of incredible things as, as well as adjudicating um, cases against discrimination. And then I moved to Arlington and I was on their Human Rights Commission and I did similar kinds of work. And then I moved back to Needham eight years ago and came back to the human, uh, of course, where else would I be? But um, following my passion and came back onto the Human Rights um, Committee. And shortly after I joined the committee became chair and then co-chair with a woman named Sandra and then co-chair with Amelia. So, um, and I'm also uh, been chairing the At My Neighbor's Table, um, the Potluck Interfaith Conversations, and I'm involved in the social justice um, work at Temple Beth Shalom, where I'm a member. Great. Thank you. And Sophia, is this your first official meeting? I thought that 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 maybe everybody had already met you, but I guess I didn't realize that. Is this your first one? Yeah, it is. Okay, I'm sorry, Sophia. <laughs> I think because you had been um, attending, I assumed that that um, that you were uh, official longer than that. So I apologize. I also welcome welcome officially to the team. Uh, do you want to tell Tina a little bit about what made what brought you to the Human Rights Committee? Yeah, sure. Um... I'm Sophia Dedek. Uh, I'm a high schooler, and this is my first official uh, meeting as an official member. I had gone to some of the events put on by the Human Rights Committee, and eventually I just got interested in kind of sitting in as just a town citizen to kind of see how things go on. And eventually I got interested and I decided to apply to become a member, and here I am. Yay. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, so, Tina, uh, I didn't I didn't even 
bother to figure out and tell you myself. <laughs> I'm Jen Howard Schroeder. I've lived in Needham about 20 years or so. I've been involved with the committee for, um, I think, six years now um, in some role with uh, chairing or co-chairing the committee for the last four. Um, and I've got three kids that um, have gone through Needham Public Schools. One of them's out. Two of them are still over at the high school. Um, so I am happy to, to have you here. Um, I have to apologize, you guys. I do not have minutes for the June 18th meeting. I think Does I me, Jennifer, can yeah. Dr. Tina like to introduce herself? I'm sorry. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Tina Burgos. I have lived in Needham for almost eight years. My twins are going to be at High Rock next year. Um, I own a business on Great Plain Avenue. It's called Coven and Lou. Uh, I'm also involved with the Council of Economic Advisors with the town, so I serve on that, that committee as well. And um, obviously this is a very important issue to all of us, um, particularly because my children are biracial. So I want them to be able to uh, flourish and develop in a town that recognizes and embraces diversity. So that is why I'm here. Wonderful. All righty. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so now I apologize. I, I do not have June 18 meet, um, meeting minutes. Uh, I told you all my, I'm having computer problems this week, and I will um, hopefully be able to get a draft out to you guys soon, but I was not able to do that, so we're, we'll just have to table those for September. Um, and I honestly, I don't even know where to start. I think that what we have up next is talking about the leadership and structure for NHRC in the coming year. Um, I think that some folks were able to sign on to what they wanted to do. Um, and I was hoping that, that we could do it that way so that we didn't have to spend a lot of time at the meeting tonight doing it, but it looks like that there's still some things, some holes. Um, is there anybody here, do you all know what I'm talking about, the list of, of kind of uh, both logistical support and programmatic support that um, I sent around by email a couple weeks ago, and then again yes. this week? Yeah. Yes, Jen, can I ask a question? Please. Um, I saw only a couple people who responded, but I'm not sure if people replied to you. I know I, re I think I replied to the whole group, so I wasn't sure if you got some that that I didn't see. I, it looks like I've got replies from Amelia, from Julie, and you, and that's... And I, I, I sent it at five o'clock. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to look at it. Cynthia, what was it that you had wanted to do? So I was away from a computer. Let, that sounds nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what were the things that you wanted to do, Cynthia? Oh, let me go back to what I wrote here. Okay, sorry, I'm just pulling it up on my phone. Was it publicity? It's an, um, geez, where is it? I'm sorry. I have to find no, it. I'm sorry. Um, I said that I would, I would work with, I can pretty much remember. Um, I guess, yep. Okay. Work with, um, here we are. Um, Work with Amelia if needed on the request for co-sponsorship. Um, okay. Publicity, I would do take on the reaching community groups, which is different than the putting it in the newspaper kind of thing. But there, we have a huge list of them, and I will be glad to do that. I'm sorry, uh, which, what was that last one? Cynthia? Under the publicity to to community groups. Okay. And like to the human, to the um, immigration justice task force, to there's, we have, uh, Amelia had put together a big list for the diversity initiative summit and developing contacts with those people to reach them, which we, okay. I think we both have done that over the time. Um, next one here, can't read it for now. Um, Along with other people, I'm I'm interested in the rapid response network and uh, liaison with schools. And then I said, I'm currently doing the liaison with the Clergy Association, Immigration Justice Task Force, keeping families together. 
with that wasn't listed there, but I would continue to do that. One of the other things you listed that I didn't check off, but you wanted somebody to manage the announcements at meetings. I'm not sure I want to do that for the whole year, but I could do it at least for some of the time. Like maybe the first two meetings to get started. And I see what you're doing to make the, the chairing more manageable if these things are taken care of. So I would volunteer to do that at least for the first two meetings. Unless somebody else, of course, would like to. I think that um, Julie had, so I can run down the list of what we have right now um, in terms of managing requests for co-sponsorship. I've got Amelia and Cynthia um, handling logistics um, for like stamp meetings and communicating regarding posting the agenda and the minutes and um, requests for town space. Um, Julie uh, yeah, signed great. up and then um, so publicity efforts then Cynthia you're saying just to the community groups but not to the newspapers and town hall and stuff is that right? Right. Okay. I can handle uh, um, I can help you with that. With that oh awesome. Thank you. Great Tina. Okay. Um, Shook has his hand up, um, so I just wanted to chime in in case he wanted to say something. I'm sorry, who's got their hand up? Ashok. Oh. Oh, I didn't even. Okay. I'm sorry, Ashok. Please. Well, we were... <laughs> You're right. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for your uh, representation of uh, the way you represent in Human Rights Committee at the town meeting and also Amelia did a fantastic job. So I just wanted to say thank you to both of you. Yes. Both of you did an excellent job. Thank you. Um, okay, let's see. Jen, I have a question. Sure. Um, I see Carrie's not here tonight and you didn't hear from her about um, what she wanted to work on. Right. Um, and, and I know she's away in New Hampshire, so I don't know oh, if she's she, away. Okay, that's that's all I wanted to. Okay, I, wanted I, to I was certainly going to be chasing her down for that. <laughs> um, but I didn't want to bug her while she was on vacation. Uh, Got it. Okay, and so in terms of um, programmatic support, uh, I said that I could help. Um, to lead the effort in writing statements if we decide that that's something we're going to do at any particular time. Um, representation from the uh, committee on whatever it is going to be called, but the, um, the rapid response resilience network that we've been talking about uh, for millennia now um, is Marlene, Amelia, and Cynthia. Um, working with the schools. Uh, is... Sorry. Sorry? I would like to volunteer for that. Okay. I have been a bit hesitant because of this COVID-19. I'm not sure how much time I'll be able to spend because some of these uh, meetings or some of the things you're planning for requires, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one or uh, group meetings, which might not be feasible. So I don't know what you're thinking about it. And if it's just, you know, being a, person on phone contacting other organizations and so on with a need um, that definitely I can do but okay. there's so much unknown right now yeah we can plan for things but can't really commit for them mm -hmm. I feel like that's 2020 in a nutshell right now <laughs> but, right. Yeah. We're, we're with you Ashok yeah 100% <laughs> 100% and okay. I'm also willing, if things improve, then I'm also willing to help whenever, you know, uh, Human Rights Committee organizes events or need people to help like Martin Luther King Day or other events, you know, or with diversity committee. So I'll be more than happy to, you know, come on okay. those days and help them. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Sorry, I'm just taking a couple of notes. Um, okay, uh, so for schools, I've got me, Julie, and Cynthia. 
um, for the my neighbor's table. Poor Marlene is going to be doing that until the end of time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I signed on to do the the book club. Um, so, do you, why don't um, I don't want to put anybody else in the spot, but think about um, what else? I think let's see. So. I think Jared and Sophia, if, you, if there are things that are jumping out to you guys that, that you think would be great um, from the student perspective to get involved with, please let me know. Um, Can I also make a suggestion to please. both Sophia and Jared? So in the past, the student representatives have been really incredible with technology and helped us a lot. So I, I know that we have Carrie who does that too, but you might be, um, <laughs> well, you're definitely more able than some of us of the older generation. I mean, Carrie does it for a living, so that's one thing. But I, if you were having trouble thinking about where you might be able to use your talents, your talents, I'm sure, far exceed most of us. So we would love your talents in those, any of those areas. <laughs> or any area. 110%. <laughs> Amelia? I would also like to suggest for the end of the year report that this uh, several possibilities. If we get a new member, um, that might be an interesting um, uh, task to do because there is a, an established format that you have to fill in and we've been using it for six years and it's worked well. And I would be glad, I, I don't want to take that on, I've done it for six years, but I would be glad to um, help someone who is interested in that, and, and that might even be something um, for Sophia and Jared. Uh, it's a matter of collecting data, and I could um, share some tips for short shortcuts so you don't have to do all the work. But it's really, I think, what is most interesting about that year and end of the year report are the photos. And you can get the photo, you don't have to take them yourself, but I could give you the, the sources, and, and matter, uh, and it's a matter of. Um, um, putting them on, on the, um, in an interesting way. Uh, so that, that's uh, um, an opportunity to use some of your technology skills in formatting um, a, a report uh, with photos. And yeah. I'd also like to say, I suspect uh, Carrie will be doing the, um, um, the technology piece, uh, especially posting things on them. I mean, she's been wonderful, but I don't mean to, uh, but I, I, I imagine that she will continue in that role posting on Facebook or web, website. And if, if you want to take a look at the annual report, it's on our website. Right, Amelia? Yeah, okay. Oh, Sophia. Um, yeah, I definitely could help out with like technology or um, the liaison for the high school. I definitely think that I could, you know, kind of tackle some of those things. So I'm, I would be interested in that. Thank you for the suggestions. Thanks. Sorry, Jared, what you, what you want to say? Um, yeah, so I was going to say the same thing with the technology and with the high school too. I mean, I can look at the report and like decide, um, maybe you know, that's something. something. I'm not I'm sure how busy I'll be this year, but you know, full chance. I think you're going to be pretty busy, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Cynthia, did you want to do something? I'm sorry. Just to build on what, what, um, am I muted? No. To build on what Jared just said, um, there is a, a format, there's a structure, and it's a matter of filling in. So it's not really that time, you don't, you're not inventing the wheel. It's a matter of, and this is something you do over a period of 10 months. So, it, you know, to be organized now we've, and it's the fiscal year. So it's from July 1st until June 30th. So it's the fall and the spring um, period that you have to, so we already have, we can help you with the, the last period, but it'll be uh, whatever we're involved in. Um, but anyway, I, I would be glad to, sh to help you with that. Cynthia? Okay, uh, this is a, a broader topic. And uh, I know that this is Tina's first official meeting, but I wanna make sure that as Tina, as you get more acquainted with what we're doing, that you are, um, 
feel welcome to take part in many of these things. And it's kind of hard to get a, an email with all this stuff and then say, what do you want to do? When, But just to say that really, um, as, as things unroll, there's a place for you to find uh, things that, that speak to you. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Tina, I'm sorry. I should have probably given us given some background um, a little bit before jumping in. I was hoping um, we we've that we're at kind of a, a place where we do not have anybody who has um, been who stepped forward saying that they wanted to chair the committee uh, for the coming year. Um, and part of why I was trying to tackle this first was that I was hoping that somebody might hear that there's so many bases covered that they'd be psyched to, to step up for that next part of it. Um, I don't see anybody jumping out of their seats yet, but uh, that's part of what's been going on. I think that um, the, the last couple of, uh, I think there's the, the chair position is always pretty full, but I think in the last couple of years, there's been so many things happening um, yeah. that, that the logistics of it are, are sometimes a little bit hard to um, stay on top of, especially, um, well, they just, they just are. Um, and so uh, what I was hoping to do is kind of break out some of the pieces that were a little bit more standalone that might be able to support somebody um, it, who was willing to take over as chair right now. Um, so I, we do have a lot of the bases covered. So thank you everybody. Uh, for thinking through that and um, for taking on some of those commitments. Um, I guess I'm not, I'm not sure where else to take that conversation. I, is there anybody that has, has reconsidered wanting to take over as chair? Katie, I don't know if, um, if you have any insight as to what the select board I'm sure they probably haven't even thought about it, but what they, it, I guess that may be one of the things that, that they need to think about is, is how they're going to um, work with the committee in that way. Yes, um, this is a first for me. I'm two months in uh, and I've not experienced a chairless uh, border commission. Um, so I am happy to check on it, but I will say um, that I, I feel like it is um, the group's decision who is going to lead the group. And so if that decision can't come from within, I, I honestly don't know how it can come from externally. Mm -hmm. um, but that is, that's my, um, I don't know uh, technically what would happen. I don't, I don't know technically what would happen, but um, so I, I can circle back. Amelia? We don't have time to discuss this this evening, but I think there's something that, that has to be resolved before we can continue seeking a chairperson. Um, there have been people that have approached us or that we've heard through the Great Provine would be interested in being a chair, but with the uncertainty that exists right now about the role of the committee and how much autonomy we have and what our what the expectations are of the select board and if we need to revisit the mission. And I mean, this has to be clarified before we can function fully as a committee. So I suggest that we need to continue or to have an in-depth conversation about this, um, maybe September, August is <laughs> halfway through, uh, mm -hmm. in September that we begin early um, having an in-depth conversation about um, exactly what is the purpose of the Human Rights Committee from the perspective of the select board at this time? And is it still, uh, has the mission been changed? The mission, the charge that we have been operating under um, since I have been on the committee? I just think a lot of these things need to be clarified um, and some of the uncertainties resolved. So that's all I have to say right now, but um, I think we need to discuss this in depth and then perhaps have some consensus and think about inviting someone to come into the committee that has shown interest and would take on that leadership role. Cynthia? Um, 
First of all, I'd like to thank Jen for sort of uh, doing one of the things I'd suggested of having a kind of interim um, chair while we're trying to answer the questions that um, Amelia has brought up. And I very much appreciate your going beyond June because it's almost a chicken and egg kind of thing. I think we're at a point where there's tremendous possibility of us being involved with the town in a way that we never have been before. But if we say we're waiting to hear from them in order to get a leader, I think the opportunity may go by that we have to have some kind of leadership before the end of this meeting so that we have somebody with whom to talk with them about what we're, I think that's later in the meeting we're going to come up with. So. Jen has been wonderful at continuing to uh, represent us. And I know we cannot ask her to take that on totally by herself. If there could even be two people or three people working together for at least for the next few months so that we can, can resolve the questions or at least get somewhere with them that Amelia raised, I think that would be one way to do it. Katie, do you know um, this this question of like what really the mission is of the committee has been uh, knocked around for many, 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 many months. Ha has the select board um, have they met to talk about what what role they want to see the committee take, or and what um, what they're hoping? Um, I don't know. It looks like going forward, especially in light of the initiative. The new initiative. Um, so there's not been a, a formal deliberation of the select board. Um, otherwise, it would have been um, noticed. And, and but I will say, and many of you, if not all of you, were part of the listening session on the 21st. Um, you all expressed wanting clarity and um, empowerment, and more than just members of the HRC included that in their comments to the select board as well. So. Um, from a staff perspective, we've kind of coalesced everything that was said and action items that were recommended or requested for next steps. Um, so there will be an agenda item for the select board um, to talk through what next steps are coming out of that listening session. Um, the select board's next meeting is on the 18th. Um, but I'd say that's, this is one piece of that, but no, there's not been a, a um, conversation without all of you um, about what that would be. Is there any uh, um, is there any mechanism for the select board and the human rights committee to meet together in, in a way to be able to have some of these discussions um, computer to computer face to face? <laughs> um, so because I think that sometimes that uh, you know I mean we, we all know that things move pretty slowly anyway, um, particularly with the open meeting laws. But I think that what we've been missing is an opportunity to have everybody in the same conversation. Um, because I think a lot of times, you know, we may, the select board may be talking with one or two members of the committee and the committee might be hearing from one or two members of the select board. But I think it makes it really hard to get consensus or really, really feel what, um, what the direction is without having everybody part of the conversation. I, I think that there can be a joint meeting. I have not experienced one, but I'm certainly, if, if the decision of this group is that they want to request a joint meeting, and um, then I'm happy to convey that. Um, and obviously, if it's forums of both groups, it would be a public meeting. Um, and I guess I'd just say for tonight, for your agenda, I know there's a discussion about what you would want next steps to be. I think it would be helpful if you all put forward what you would want the charge to be or what you want to be able to do that you don't feel like you're currently doing um, to your point to kind of have one to centralize the discussion on something concrete. Tina? Uh, are, do members of any members of the select board ever sit in on the meetings? When we have our Council of Economic Advisor meetings, we always have Mo Handel always sits in on our meetings to represent the select board. So we always have that sounding board there. Um, 
and are able to get pretty immediate feedback from a representative of the board when we're discussing issues. So I'm surprised that Matt or somebody from the select board doesn't sit in on the meetings. There's been a couple of meetings where we've had, I think John, uh, John came once, I think Mo came once this past year. In the year before, um, it doesn't Mary, Ann came. Mary Ann came. Mary Ann came the year before. So it's not something that's regular. Do they, do, are, are they at all of the, the council meetings? Yeah, Mo sits in on every single meeting. So um, that might be something that we could discuss to have a represent, just so there's more clarity and communication and, and um, consistency so that we're not guessing, you know, what are they thinking? What are they not thinking? What, what can we do? What can't we do? When Mo is in on the meetings, we, it's a quick, you know, he'll tell us, okay, that's within your boundaries. That's not within your boundaries. Um, and if it's a question that he can't answer, he'll take it back to the board and usually we follow up, he'll follow up with us um, at the following, you know, next, the following month's meeting. So I think it's important, right? Especially they launched the, this new initiative to have somebody that's consistently sitting on in on the meetings from the board that I think that would help with communication. Mm -hmm. Isn't Katie, that one, wasn't the reason Katie's here? I was just gonna ask that. I'm not sure if that was what Katie, what you as, as, um, understood as your role. I am here to facilitate communication, but I don't, I, I am not a member of the select board. So I don't want to, um, I, I can't provide that instantaneous feedback the way that a member could. I, um, but, Cause I, I can't speak for the board, but I am trying to improve connecting the dots because I know what's happening on each board. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the, the distinction, breaking down some of those process silos versus um, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of the select board members. But I just, um, the problem when we had individual people come is they could not speak for the select board and they would say, I can only speak for myself. So it's interesting that, you know, you have a different experience with Mo because you're dealing maybe with different kinds of issues. Right. Um, so one of the things that I um, wanted to say, so we are supposedly advisory to the select board, but they had this listening session and we thought they were going to ask for our advice about how to go about the listening session and they didn't. Um, so um, I think that's pretty telling. Uh, even though our hands have been tied so much this year and we haven't been able to do the kind of work that we would like to do, um, the fact that they were doing something and we weren't invited to the table um, was very disappointing to many of us. And there's been a lot of um, good intention by the select board, but also um, some, ver some disappointment in what happened. Um, community members were very disappointed in, in sort of the, the response um, to people coming forward and telling their stories. And we might have been able to help um, facilitate that or anticipate that or, you know, um, work with that. So um, I, I find it to be, you know, very frustrating. Um, so we, we really are powerless <laughs> at this point. Um, so that's what I wanted to say. Oh, and one other, I'm sorry, one other thing. Um, uh, Tina, we do have, but we haven't had for a long time, a police liaison. So when the Human Rights um, Committee originally started, it was with the police and they were our partners. Um, and, um, and the police chief used to sit on the board. And this was, you know, in the, in the early days, but then we continued to have um, police presence. It was, I think, very, very helpful to us. Uh, and um, I don't know what's happened to Belinda, but, um, I don't know, Jen, if you've heard from her, um, but she's Belinda, not on the, not on the email list. No, so Sandy not. didn't invite her. I, I didn't even think to invite her with this one. Um, to be honest with you, I thought we had some kind of internal things that we needed to work out. Oh, okay. But we have an appointed police liaison. Um, which I think has been very helpful, and also we have. We used to have a school liaison, and then um, when she left, then uh, this, after a number of years, the superintendent has come to many of our meetings, which is incredible that he's taken the time to do that. So I just wanted you to know sort of that 
history also. Cynthia? Okay. Um, I hear what Marlene is saying about the frustration in terms of the the way the listening session was and wanting to be part of, uh, of that process. And I also hear Katie saying one of the things that we can do as a human rights committee is make suggestions and I th recommendations, and I think it's somewhere on the agenda, to the, to the select board about things like what to do with another listening session and all. We can say we weren't included, but let's, let's at least take this opportunity to come up with a number of recommendations that is given to them. And then we can see whether, how they respond to that and have it in our official meeting, official recommendations that are given to them. I love the idea of having a select board person who can really represent what's going on and not just say that's my personal opinion. That was a, dis a disappointing part of having the, the person who was chair at that point and, and then having Mo, well, if it were up to me as a person, I feel this way, but then we can, it was like, well, uh, something needs to happen that's more, that's firm, that's a way that we can say when they can, but they could answer a little bit occasionally, well, this is outside the bounds or this isn't, but I think that if we can come up with a list of recommendations right now for before their August 18th meeting and say, at this time, this is what the Human Rights Committee is recommending. And they can say, well, you can't do that, or we're not interested in this, or we'll take it under advisement, whatever. And that gives us a concrete definition of who, of what we are by their response. So I, I think that we did, sorry, Ashok, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just have one comment and I, more of my, my frustration with the select men, because if you remember when they came, one of the issues which we brought up was about human rights. What do you think is human rights? Is it political or not? To me, it's not. And they think it's a political issue too. And everything needs to be a consensus a statement from town. So something happens, it has to go to the selectmen. It takes weeks or a month before we get a response. And that's very frustrating. So if they can clearly define what are the things we can act on, we can make a statement on behalf of the committee without any hesitation, that would be a big win. Otherwise, every time going to the selectmen for approval is very frustrating. That's all. I was trying to look up, um, Amelia, the statement that you submitted um, at the listening session, uh, because I, I am also thinking that between your, uh, your statement and mine, that we did play out um, some specific asks that maybe what we want to do is put, consolidate them into one document just to, uh, I don't know, I guess to send to the, to the select board before their um, meeting on the 18th. Amelia? I, I would like, first of all, I'd like to recommend that we include with the minutes, that we include your presentation and mine. The first part of my presentation was not read because I would have taken up double the amount of time and I didn't want to take time away from other people who, who wanted to share their voice. Um, but I did make a strong case in the first part of the presentation, a case for the human rights. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the I think, strongest points is that we know the pulse of the community. We're all involved with groups, with individuals. We've lived here a long time. We are well connected. And we are perhaps better connected um, in, in getting a sort of a consensus or general idea of what that pulse is. Um, for example, issues with the police uh, department, with school issues, um, etc. And we could, and th this would be invaluable, our knowledge, um, and also our background in human rights. Uh, as you heard when we introduced ourselves, we have a background in working in various capacities in human rights organizations or as individuals. Uh, so uh, my suggestion is, yes, we should give it to them. When I, 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 I did submit my report 
my presentation and I asked it to be a public record, a part of the, I don't know what happened to it, I never heard. But I think in addition to the minutes of this meeting, I, I, I um, recommend that my report be included and yours, Jen, because you outline very specific things that we, we could do as a committee. And, and that is one of the questions we're, we're discussing uh, today. Mm -hmm. That was on the agenda for today. Are you making that a, a motion? Oh, yes, I make it a motion. And I, I, need second, a motion. I second that motion. Okay. <laughs> But I think what Jen said about taking things from that, those, that was Jen's statement. That was your statement and they were wonderful. But this group had not together looked at them. So if we can consolidate and put them in, you know, like 10 points or whatever and say this evening, the Needham Human Rights Committee uh, acknowledged, approved, affirmed, whatever that these are recommendations we've heard previously, but together we are saying we want the select board to to consider. So it's just taking what Amelia said and what Jen said and and putting that together. So what's the what is the motion then that we're voting on to do we need to um, think through wording right now while we're all here. Well, Amelia's motion was to put the statements that were made at the select board listening session, um, include them in the minutes from tonight. Um, so uh, that was the motion. And it sounds like Cin Cynthia is making a different motion, uh, not a motion. Cynthia is suggesting that we um, synthesize um, what the two of you wrote and come up with a new document that um, that we vote on tonight that then goes to the select board. Am I correct, Cynthia? Yes, she's, she's saying yes. Thank you. Because the, otherwise those are individual statements. This affirms it from our whole group. The, I, I think they're two different, you know, I'm making, I made a case for the Human Rights Committee and that I was not recommending things that we should be doing or could right. do. And I, I, I guess I'm wondering why can't we have two, they're not that long. The reports are very, really very concise and brief, sort of bullet. Uh, oh, yes, we should have them and also the other thing, two things. We should have them on the, as part of our minutes. And also right now we should see if we can come up with recommendations based on your two reports. Two separate. Well, I thought the reports had recommendations. Did I? Yeah, but Jen suggested consolidating. Some of them were the same and some, yeah. I don't know. I think maybe to, to, to make sure that we have something specific that we're asking them to respond to. I don't know if, if having it in one um, document would make it easier um, to identify what it is that we're asking them to do. I don't know. Katie, do you know when, when, when you all are um, compiling kind of what to think about from that hearing? Is this, does this sound like a step that we don't need to take or do you think that they are looking for some clarity for, from us? Yeah, great question. I just was pulling up all of my notes um, from the listening session. So I um, feel like we have um, very clearly what you and Amelia both said and um, Amelia, you submitted in writing. Thank you for that. Um, so I guess, I guess for me, we already have what was expressed in the select board, which was great examples of the value of this group. What is missing is, um, and I guess multiple people expressed this group wanting to be empowered. I think what's missing is concretely, what do you want to be doing that you can't do right now or what needs to change from your perspective? I think you, you guys just voiced some of it, but I, I do think it's different than what you've already submitted to the select board. Um, okay. if, if this model isn't working for whatever reason, what is your alternative for them to respond to? I, I think from my perspective would help move the conversation from where it's been. Okay. Well, I'll respond to that, Jen, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I'm just taking um, some notes, please. Um, so I would say an, initially, um, 
I feel like we have to go to mommy and daddy every time we have to do anything. So we have no autonomy. If we want to co-sponsor an event, we got to see if the select board says it's okay. Anything that has to do with human rights that is expressed in the UN Declaration of Human Rights, we should be able to make a statement about. We should be able to co-sponsor um, any event that another group is doing in the name of the Needham Human Rights Committee. So that's my sort of initial, that's, that's what we want to be able to do. Um, so I wasn't here, I don't know if there, was there public participation at the beginning of this meeting? Uh, nobody wanted to speak at the oh, time. Okay. Because there is something that um, that's going around that some alums wrote um, about things going on in town and they're looking for support from the Needham Human Rights Committee. Um, and um, I thought they were maybe going to come. So if they in fact presented it, we would not at this point, our hands would be tied and we would have to go to the select board. So in some ways, What's the purpose of having a human rights committee if we can't make any decisions? Why doesn't everything just go to the select board if that's the way it's going to be? Um, we feel impotent. Um, and um, it's not a good use of our time and our energy and our expertise. Okay. Do um, so. Maybe this is part of that same thing, but I, I think that one of the things that we've been talking about is getting a confirmation of what our mission is. Is that is that does that feel the same, Marlene, as to what you're saying, or is that different enough to make it a second bullet or a first bullet? Um, I'm not sure that I think it's pretty clear what what it is. Um, I I'm not sure that we need confirmation. I think maybe we need we need it to be changed. Um, and as far as I know, that is probably not a select board decision. I think that's a town meeting decision, but I don't know that for sure, because I'm pretty sure that the Human Rights Committee was set up through town meeting. Um, so, um, so, so any change probably to our mission or charge would, would be that. Um, but if you look broadly, we are about education and we are to advise the select board, but that doesn't mean um, that we can't also take on our voice in terms of any human rights. Mm -hmm. And the human rights are clearly laid out in that UN declaration. And we're, we're not looking to go outside of that. Um, and I think where the problem is, is that the select board does not understand that. And they think it's all political, but all we want is for everybody to be able to do what everybody else can do and not to have anybody's rights um, uh, taken away or minimized or you know um, anything like that. So does that help? Um, Are there other 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 committee members that want that have a specific ask in mind that you want to be have included in a, in a, a communication with them? I, I was thinking about the the communication piece and maybe tying somewhat into what Tina was saying earlier in, in terms of having that direct contact. I don't mm -hmm. know if there's the space on um, the select board agendas, and I even hesitate to say this because I don't think I have time to do it actually, but if I think that um, I think that it would be both symbolic and very um, uh, substantively helpful for the for part of the select board agenda each either monthly or they meet twice a month right. Um, to have a set time where they get kind of a report from the Human Rights Committee so that um, to the community, they realize that this is this is something that that is um, not just coming up um, at times of protest and distress, but that this is something that's on the town's radar month to month. Mm -hmm. Is that something we could suggest 
they put on their agenda as a standing monthly item and then we send a representative every time so it's not on one person's plate but you know member of the human rights committee provides whatever five minute update mm -hmm. and it keeps that at the, i like that i would keep it at the top of mind for them as well even mm -hmm. if there's not a, a substantive update to provide at least it's like carved out time to, to say this is what we're working on Cynthia? Can we add that to uh, what Tina's experience with the Economic Advisory Committee to, to ask that they send a representative from the select board to our meeting and oh, to couple that, to, in, to improve communication and help to understand and help to empower the um, Human Rights Committee that we would have it on their agenda with a representative there and that a select board member would be asked to come to the monthly meeting of the Human Rights Committee. So it's a two, two kind of thing, two part. Yeah, I think it would certainly be, um, it would give them a, a, a lot of insight into what our deliberations are like if, if somebody was actually here or listening to the whole meeting. Um, but I think especially um, for select board members who are afraid that we're like a runaway train, I think that we would all agree we spend a lot of time <laughs> debating things here um, pretty, pretty thoughtfully, I think. Um, I, can I? Yeah. Um, I think Julie's idea is a good idea um, because I think they're afraid of us. To, I'm a, I think they are afraid of the issues that come before us um, and because they don't know. <laughs> I think that's part of it. Um, so, um, and I think they're very, very, very cautious and conservative. And they see us probably as liberal and radical. Um, and we actually aren't. <laughs> uh, we, we are not, I don't think. No, we're not. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we are a very thoughtful, um, caring group of people who just want to make our town the best it can be for those who live, work, and pass through. Um, so, um, so I think Julie's idea is is a great idea, but that still doesn't give us any power. <laughs> um, it still means that you know we're going to have to maybe go to them. I want them to allow us. This is ridiculous to have to say to allow. It's like asking Big Brother, um, <laughs> um, you know can we please co-sponsor this event, this, um, you know, about LBD, tra transgender rights or whatever, um, you know, whatever we're doing or something around racial justice. Um, and those are all human rights. So, um, you know, part of it is education too. And I doubt that any of them have read the UN Declaration on Human Rights. I think, I mean, if I'm if I've heard everyone correctly, I think the two specific asks of having one getting the, you know, change whatever change has to happen to get to be able to make the statements and co-sponsor without the permission. That's one ask, and then the other ask is this communication, two-way communication piece where we get to sit in their meetings, they get to sit in our meetings. I think those two asks would solve a lot of this sort of like more annoying issues that we come up against regularly. The other thing I was just thinking, I don't know um, if this is logistically possible, but I wonder, um, again, I guess not knowing kind of what next steps that they're going to be, but if they would consider forming something of like a, a, a code task force between a couple of members of the Human Rights Committee and a couple of members of the Select Board that are going that would like be focused on trying to um, think through the next steps with the Unite Against um, Racism initiative, so that there was maybe um, you know I'm picturing like two two select board members and two human rights committee members who were meeting outside of the um, our regular meeting times to uh, to really kind of think through some of the, the ideas that the community brought up um, with regard to the initiative and 
think about how to implement them. That might be a way to tap into some of the expertise here in the committee, um, but also um, kind of work alongside the select board in implementing whatever the initiative is going to be looking like. Cynthia? Hey, uh, Jen, could we broaden that and say we would like to have uh, we feel it's important that the Human Rights Committee have an active role in the implementation of the select board, you know, initiative. One way that this could happen would be a joint task force, but not, not just ask for that, we're asking to have a significant role. I think that's a good way to, to, to phrase it in this list of specific asks. One of the asks mm -hmm. is letting yep. members of the Human Rights Committee concretely help implement things that come out of specific requests or incidents. Okay. Can I, I just, Julie, I think it's very interesting that you, the operative word there was let, that we have to have permission. <laughs> we should be empowered to do the job that we need to do for the town. When I write up the minutes, I'll use the word empowered. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so I like what Marlin said. We should send them the human rights, UN Human Rights Declaration and ask them to comment on it that do they support it or not. And if they support it, then we should be allowed to act on it. As simple as that. Can we make that like one sentence there can you please allow us to act on the declaration of UN human rights? That's all we want from there. Is, um, the, uh, does anybody have any interest in um, proposing some kind of, uh, I don't know if retreat is the right word, but um, educational opportunity that was both human rights committee members and select board members where maybe we bring in an outside speaker or facilitator to um, maybe, it, maybe it is talk about the, um, the human rights declaration or maybe it's, um, you know, maybe it's something different. Maybe it's, maybe it's a person who, uh, whose expertise is in helping communities organize. I mean, I guess that's kind of what Nicole was doing. Yeah, that's, I was thinking Nicole when you said that. <laughs> right. So maybe. Um. Well, right now, don't we need to, you know, follow up with what Ashoka said is one, two is the two-way communication, and three is the specifics around it be empowered to work with them to implement, you know, that right now as that we we have like these three things, and I don't know if there's a, I don't think this is the time to suggest a retreat, but we do have the, the work with, with Nicole that's kind of in that direction. But the, the first three things, maybe we need to uh, vote on those or as a group. Should we make a motion to send these three things as what we want to send to the select board? Is that how that would work? So I've got five things written down. Oh. Five threes. Okay. Five even better. <laughs> yeah. I might have bundled some together. So that's probably more concise than mine then. Yeah, let me let me read what I have and then you can tell me if I missed something. Um, but for specific asks, one is to empower the Human Rights Committee to be able to make a statement about and co-sponsor any event related to human rights as defined by the UN Declaration without permission from the Select Board. Number two is um, this two-way communication where there would be included on the select board agenda an opportunity for the Human Rights Committee to update select board on what's going on and vice versa, ask a select board member to sit in on our meetings monthly. And then three, I have uh, empowering members of the Human Rights Committee to help implement specific items that come out of town incidents and requests such as the creation of a task force. Do 
Did I miss something? Um, yeah, no, you're right. I just I had broken up the um, the communication one, and then I also had sending uh, Ashok's idea about sending the declaration. Oh, so I, okay. I could make that separate. I thought that might have sort of fallen under that first bullet point, but I could mm -hmm. I yeah, flush it up a little more. You did a much better job. Um, yeah. Uh, and I think the third one needs to mention specifically the Needham Unites Against Racism initiative. Yeah, okay. That Not that there aren't other things, but that's, that's right now. That's fine, yep. Yep, thanks. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's excellent. So that's a motion that who's making? I will make the motion to send those three things. I don't know how either was it via Katie or do we send them in another way to the select board as our specific asks? Well, we need to make a motion, then we need to have a second, then we need to have discussion and then a vote. Okay, so I will make a motion to send these three specific asks to the select board. Second. Okay, I guess I'll do a, a roll call vote in favor of- I want to call for discussion, Jen, first. Yeah, I thought we just had it, but yeah, sure. Does I don't know if, if maybe there's somebody wants to say something that they didn't get a chance to say. Having heard um, Julie run through it, uh, does anybody else have some thoughts about it? Either for or against or something else they want to add or change? No? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, seeing nobody um, raising their hand to try to have any more discussion about it, I'll go down and do a roll call vote. Um, could you please um, answer uh, how you wish to vote? Um, Amelia Klein? Yes. yes. And Marlene Schultz? Yes. Cynthia Ganam? Yes. Uh, Jared Pizzuto? Yes. Sophia Dedek? Yes. Ashok Mehta? Yes. And Tina Burgos? Is that yes. Right? Is it Tina? Burgos, yes. Yes. Um, and uh, Jennifer Howard also votes yes. And I think that that's all we have here today. So but not Julie. Julie Venables. Yes. Sorry, I'm reading off my email. Okay. I apologize, Julie. No problem. Okay, so then the next question is, um, Katie, is it in, um, what is the best way for us to get this to the select board? Um, I would recommend if, Jen, if, Jen, if you're still quasi chair, um, if you can put it in writing to okay. Mo Handel as the chair of the select board and feel free to copy Kate and I. Okay. And Jen, I can send you the way that I had ordered them all. That's helpful. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, I've, I'm looking down at our agenda to see what, what we've just done. <laughs> it doesn't fit necessarily squarely in any of the agenda items that we have in here, but I feel like it's close enough to the um, recommendations regarding the United Against Racism initiative. Um, I think based on what um, what we just discussed and what Katie said earlier about, about them having um, a good record of what recommendations we made at the listening session. Um, that I feel like, I don't know if there's much more to say about that, but we didn't actually get a chance necessarily to um, talk about anybody's reactions um, or thoughts about the listening session. I don't know if that's something that you all wanna do um, or not, if we, if you do, I think this would be a good time to do it. Amelia? Can I say that there have been reactions and responses and I, I assume um, the select board has seen the um, recommendations, the, uh, that the um, Equal Justice uh, Needham Task Force has very intensive, um, very, um, 
detailed uh, recommendations for follow-up. I know David Summergrad um, sent a, a letter to everyone individually on the select board with recommendations. I won't repeat them, um, but I think there's a lot of information there that um, we can't uh, recommend all of them tonight. Uh, I think you mentioned something about three. We should select three um, uh, paths for the select board to take as a result of the initiative. Uh, but there are, there are voices in the community um, that, that have responded. And I think the, the board in reviewing not just what we recommend, but I think they, um, and perhaps already have done so, they need to look at progressive needham is another another example so people are and they and many people have communicated directly with the select board so there's a lot of information there as well as what we're presenting so do we want to do the three um the ones that julie had mentioned or well i think you um i think you said in the email what um what are the three priorities that we want to recommend to the select board uh, actions uh, or uh, things they should focus on as a result of the initiative? Uh, Did we I'm want sorry. to sort of done that indirectly? Uh, I think it's good to get very specific. And I, there are a number of things that have been going around. I specifically liked David's letter because I thought it was a, uh, it was very positive, but really saying what needs to happen. And it wasn't a, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, but this is what needs to happen going forward, such as specifically the continuing the, the listening sessions and making use of the lived experience survey, showing a different way of collecting things, of considering the um, town-wide uh, race equity audit uh, there's there's several things there, and I don't remember which things. Uh, I know Jen and Amelia had a lot in their recommendations, but those are two that I thought were really important. Building on what they've done, building on what they've heard so far, how to go deeper with that. Sort of starting with where where they're at, and one of, and I know that the towns, uh, the school departments. Uh, audit when they hired a consultant, she began with listening to voices. So we're saying essentially that needs to go deeper. And then the next part is doing the, um, the audit. That's just a beginning part. Did I read somewhere or hear that they were hiring a consultant? Maybe Katie, you can confirm that. Um, not regarding a townwide audit, um, the select board um, gave approval for an outside investigator relative to the police related uh, complaint, but it, not a broad townwide audit. No, I didn't mean a townwide audit. Um, so it was oh, only for the police investigation. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was um, someone to help move forward the um, the agenda that was started with the listening session for the, you know. No. No, oh, okay. No. So do we want, so I guess then what we're talking about now is, is coming up with another list of a handful of things that we think of all of the um, recommendations that were made that we've seen either from our our own committee um, from Equal Justice Needham or from David Subrad, which of which those uh, suggestions we think are most important. Is that what we're discussing right now? Well, the agenda says um, recommendations to the select board regarding Needham uh, United Against Racism initiative. So the follow up. Mm -hmm. And I think you had suggested we at least come up with three yeah. Like three that we think are the most. The, there is one, there are people who believe that we should not have make people of color have to come forward to tell their stories. 
Um, it's an uncomfortable position for people. Um, it's the white people who haven't been, we haven't been doing the work that we need to be doing. Um, so uh, I think it's important. I think it's important to hear stories, but I, I think this was not the right way to go about it. So I'm concerned that um, going forward that it may end up being similar to what we had before. And that is, um, uh, I don't wanna put anybody in an uncomfortable position or put the onus on those who've been discriminated against by those of us who's discriminated. And when I say us, I don't necessarily mean the select board, or, you know, the 400 years of what's been going on for people of color. So, so I, I wanna be careful about that. And, and, um, and I'm not sure exactly how we wanna communicate that. You know, I don't know if other people agree with me. Mm -hmm. I, I do agree. And I, I was thinking this weekend that the focus on individual um, stories is, I think, like kind of only half of the, the, the task that we have ahead of us is that um, I think that the individual stories that we hear about, a lot of it comes down to other individual acts of, of racism, but kind of completely ignores the more systemic issues that um, that might be that we might be able to discover without putting people through having to tell their stories, um, which is why I think Marlene, your your age old idea of the town audit I think would be fantastic because I think that um, when we keep like you say kind of putting the uh, the onus on our neighbors to come forward with these awful painful stories in order to kind of um, prove that it exists and justify us doing anything further is, it's not right and it's also not necessary. I think that there are other ways maybe that, that we, or other things that we could be looking at to kind of try to get at some of the more systemic issues without putting that kind of pressure on the individuals. Do you think it's appropriate? Um, I, I, I think that what I've heard from the the people who are leading the lived experiences project that they are hoping that they will have a way to present this to the community if um, encouraging the select board to focus on on working with that um, I don't know if they're if you'd call them an organization or, or that initiative instead of trying to host another um, listening session zoom and that way would, make, would be a way for them to, to get the information that that particular information that they're looking for without uh, repeating what we had. Uh, Jen, I just have a comment. And my comment is I'm really saddened by the fact that they're looking for more stories. Do we really need more stories? Right. Isn't it time to act now? And that's what Human Rights Committee should be doing, suggesting what we can do rather than collecting more stories or giving them more information about what's going on and waiting for them to act. Mm -hmm. And I say that uh, some of the informal neighborhood blogs and conversations I've had outside of all the committees uh, meetings that I've attended, people are asking what next. In fact, the potluck group is uh, planning an event, um, I think it's in October, beyond the yard signs. Uh, that's not the whole title, but you know, people want to know what's next. What kind of action right. can we take as individuals when I take my, besides planting that yard sign, what is available? What can I do in Needham? And I think that's what we might be focusing on and maybe on collaboration with some of the other groups uh, in Needham, but organizing um, forms or events like the potluck uh, group um, that would help people understand what they can do today. In fact, Agreed. when I heard, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I agree with you. We should be acting rather than, you know, collecting more stories or telling you know, select men, you know, things aren't right. It's high time we start working on action, do something rather than just keep talking about it. And that's anti-racist work. It's taking action. Yep. It's what an anti-racist person does. 
thoughts. So one of the things that we could do if we want to think about taking action is, I don't know what's going on with housing in the town of Needham, um, but, um, you know, I think that Trump said that um, there no longer has to be a certain percentage of new development that goes to low income people. Um, I think that what he did was that, that the rules around what those percentages are, I think that, that it used to be that towns had to, um, and Katie, maybe you know, maybe you know this better than me, but my understanding was that the towns had to answer like a, a very comprehensive list of questions, like kind of proving what they've done to uh, increase opportunities for more affordable housing. I think similar to the conversation, Amelia, that, that you got pulled into with, with Dan a couple of months ago, and that now what Trump has done is taken away essentially that questionnaire of like the, the hoops that towns had to do to prove that they were doing what they were supposed to do in order to get the federal money. And I think so now he's just making it easier for them to get the federal money without proving that they've done X, Y, and Z. They think they still are required to, to say that they're making efforts, but they don't have to, um, they're not given very specific ideas of what those efforts are supposed to look like anymore. Well, okay. So, so going back to the housing piece, I mean, that's one of the things that we could take action on in our town in terms of making our town um, a more accessible and diverse community is, is to look at, at housing. Um, I agree. Do you th are you thinking like doing um, like an educational program that was like, what is affordable housing? What does it look like here in Needham? And what, what are... What Actually, I mean, that's, that's an interesting idea, but I was thinking about going to like planning board and talking to them. Um, people who are making decisions about who gets permits to do what. Um, and um, so doing something more systemic rather than just educational um, to hear what's going on and then maybe decide um, cause I don't know what's going on in those kinds of committees and what, you know, what they're thinking about. And, um, you know, there's so many teardowns in Needham and it's not affordable for people to move here. And if there, are um, multiple, um, dwellings going up, I don't know what's happening. I think that we are at the minimum in terms of low income housing and we could do, if we are if we want to put our money where our mouth is, then we could do better than the minimum um, and, you know, really make this a much more diverse community um, that would be great for all of us to live in. Cynthia? Um, taking what Marlene said and coming back to the idea of trying to find three actions to suggest, it sounds like the first one is the going beyond listening to look at something that has to do with systemic racism. And one way of further understanding that would be a town audit. Mm -hmm. Another way is to take action in specific areas such as housing. I don't think in the scope of the minutes remaining, we can come up with a specific proposal on that, but I think we could bring it together with the idea, give an example of something where systemic racism is uh, is present. But I think we need to somehow mention what, in their minds, they were doing what they thought was the most important thing to do with a listening session. And I think somehow we want to hold those good intentions and say, you know, what we've heard is that you're wanting to educate yourselves in the community about what's going on. However, the process had these ways in which it was painful and so forth and that we already know. But to put that in some kind of wording that's hearing their intents and then saying, we think we are, we can contribute to this process, the initiative, by going forward with the action part that has to do with the systemic racism, such as uptown audit, such as looking at housing. 
So it sounds, I, I'm thinking we haven't talked at all um, specifically about the, the resiliency network or the, uh, the rapid response network, but that might be a tangible thing um, to ask for with, with regard to um, the uh, United Against Racism initiative. So maybe, maybe we've got the town audit and getting the, um, the event with over zero back on the calendar to get it started. Because I feel like that once that event happens that there might be a natural um, group of people that might be willing to um, push for more steps going forward. I, I like that. I think what is interesting about yeah. the movement is that it's bringing groups together. If I remember the the workshop agenda, which never took place, but uh, people were being invited from various places in the community, different groups. And now that we have equal justice, progressive need, and we have all these other groups, if they could be part of the discussion, I mean, if we could come together and, and I mean, that's a lot of power and a lot of creative energy um, and do it in the best interest of the community. Uh, I think it, I, I would strongly recommend that we pursue the uh, uh, response resilient. Uh, resi <laughs> Whatever we're calling it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So do we need that, these sort of three things as a motion or? Um... So what was the third? I've got the town audit, the network, and then what was the third? Julie, do you know? She's the she's the best note taker around. <laughs> Wasn't it actions around systemic racism? Yeah, so addressing that such as housing, such as yeah. housing, housing, town audit, and then um, getting the event with over zero back on the calendar. I mean, I feel like that the only like the wording of like attacking something related to sy systemic racism is is kind of. I mean, that's it's not very specific. It's not a very like achievable um, task. Well, that I would come out of the audit too. Right. Yeah, yeah. The way I, the way I sort of was thinking, or writing it down was these are the ways we could attack systemic. One way is like looking at the housing board. One way is this town audit. One way is getting the over zero event back on. What if, what if the last one was, um, creating um, or empowering the Human Rights Committee to be the, um, the body in the town that accepts um, complaints or um, reports of incidences of bias or racism or hate. Hmm. Well, that's what it does in every other town. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've been doing for years. Isn't that in the mission? Hearing individual things, I thought that was part of, or the part of what was there. I think that it is, but I think that the response part has been has been the um, the word that's caused a lot of um, controversy over the last couple of years. So, I mean, I think that there was some question um, about, I don't know, I have, I can't even remember which which email chain it was on at this point, but um, like where people should go if they're having things happen. Does it, does it make any sense to come to the Human Rights Committee? Yeah, so we could hear, but we can't respond. So that doesn't really do much. Right. Well, un unless, we are, unless we develop a protocol, mm -hmm. which is what you need to have when you have, um, when you have the ability to um, listen to people who feel that they have been discriminated against, um, and there's a whole, you develop a whole protocol and we don't have to start from square one because everybody, every other town that does this has that. Uh, MCAD has it too, Mass Commission Against Discrimination. Um, and um, so then, I mean, you have, the power that you have is that you try to get the parties together to see what's going on. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that everything ends up in litigation. In fact, the goal is that it not go to litigation, that people can come together and, and you know, um, resolve the differences. Do you have to be trained as a mediator to be able to do that? Um, 
yes, I, I, you, you, yeah, you really need to. I mean, you can do in the investigation. Um, and then, um, I mean, and they're also protocol how you do the investigation, who does the investigation, and then you need to be, yeah, because I, I did that um, in Cambridge. Um, I was a, uh, I did the mediation. We never did it alone, did it always in teams. Yes. yes. Um, so um, but both in how, I, I worked on cases both in housing and in uh, work discrimination. Um, mm. So, uh, So, I mean, one of the cases, just to give you an example to see if you think, so one of the cases was um, a, a trans uh, woman who was fired and felt that um, she was fired because um, she started out her job as a man and then she, when she transitioned, um, they said that her work was no longer any good. <laughs> um, but there was clearly, you know, discrimination um, going on there. And then also around, I don't even know if, if we have Section 8, is the Housing Authority Section 8? Yes, it is, Katie saying, yeah. So there was some Section 8 discrimination going on also that I heard some cases around. Um, um, and But there were also some simple things that happened. So like a, a gay um, parent alliance wanted to publicize something through the schools and um, didn't understand why they weren't allowed. And so um, we got the, the parties together and helped them figure out that it, because it was an outside organization, schools don't promote outside organizations. That was came out of the superintendent's office. So it was not, the PTC could do it, but couldn't come right from the school. So it was, some of it was just misunderstanding and trying to figure out what was going on. So I think, yes, people um, were trained and you can get trained to do it, but um, it's not rocket science. <laughs> But if one of the recommendations is developing a protocol that the Needham Human Rights Committee yes. use to, um, what's the word? To um, hear um, complaints. I mean, that's what it is. It's a com mm -hmm. to hear and I would say respond to complaints. Yeah. And they could say, well, we don't want you to do that. And we could say, let's have a conversation about it and hear what the problem is and then talk about the training. So if we ask for it, then that's a step forward into a meaningful role mm -hmm. to consider. And it's also, it makes a statement that the town has this, this group and the town takes this seriously. And um, we want, everybody to feel comfortable and if they don't and they have something comes up and there's a complaint there's a place that they can take it this is a town that takes it seriously that's what we're saying right okay i'm feeling pretty militant tonight guys maybe more than usual <laughs> so bring it on <laughs> So do we want to stick with three recommendations for the, initi the United Against Racism initiative? Mm -hmm. Is there a fourth that it, anybody has strong feelings for that they want to add in to this? Right now we've got the town audit, the network, and then developing this protocol to hear and respond to complaints. Those are three major. Right. I, I don't know if we want to add on more to that because other things will pop up once we start meeting in September. By the way, Tina, we normally don't meet in the summer. <laughs> We're all on vacation right now. <laughs> and we've been meeting for um, th a nine, nine extra minutes so, so far. So I'm sure everybody's probably ready to get on with their evening. But don't we, don't we need to figure out leadership? As we, as the- Are you uh, volunteering? I, I think that Marlene and Julie with advisory from Jen would be a wonderful, at least interim group. Cynthia, you haven't been chair yet. <laughs> I did notice that, Marlene. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that to all the other groups I'm the coordinator of. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been chair of this committee. I have chaired this committee. <laughs> but I'm saying as a transitional kind of uh, group, 
to have either you or Amelia, who's been a chair in the past, along with somebody newer like Julie, who seems to have a really good sense of what's going on. I don't know time to do this. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> I was still hoping that Carrie might change her mind if we if we were empowered. I think that's part of, I know that Carrie's getting a new job or expanding her position, but um, I think part of the, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think if we were more empowered, I think Carrie would, might, we might be able to convince her. Do you think, Jen? Honestly, I mean, she, they just put her position up to full time and she's doing all the tech for the school. I feel like, this is not the year that not she's the year for her. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. Um, I don't know. Where's it? Where's kind of stuck? Um, One suggestion that I had is that um, perhaps for if we could get through the next three months or four months, if one person would take over the role for one month. I was thinking that too, Amelia. I wonder if we could trade off well it's that or nothing <laughs> i mean we have to come up with some solution and uh, we could um give the information to um sandy or, or kate uh, so that they know who to contact for that period of time but we're all working together anyway uh, and if we divvy up the the tasks somebody's doing the meeting someone it, it might not be as, as challenging, but that might even get us through the winter, you know, the fall period. Because I think if we can reconcile our differences, um, I don't know for sure, but I would reach out to people. Uh, we, we still need more people on the committee. Uh, how many more do we need? I think just one. Just one more, okay. Um, and I, I think that there was one person who was, was really interested who would be um, fantastic, but I, I think he was talking with um, Mo and Matt today, so I don't know what how how that what he decided after having that conversation. Mm -hmm. so, so there's two things going on. I think um, one is we're asking to be able to do more, but we don't have any leadership to take us to the next level. Right, to take us where we need to go. Um, so that's going on. And but the other is because we don't have any power maybe part of the reason that no one is stepping up. And I also know that someone was interested in the committee and after coming to one of the meetings, someone who I think would have been terrific as a leader, um, because we didn't have any power, decided not to apply. Mm -hmm. So I saw that was somebody I was recruiting too, so. Yes, I think it was. <laughs> the same person. <laughs> yes. So can we do that? Have. Uh, Right now, two people volunteer, one for September, one for October. I have a conflict that I might not be able to come to those meetings, so I could volunteer for one of the months, but i reluctant to do either of those if we're doing the third Thursday. Katie? Just wanna make a recommendation for, but you all decide what you want, of course. Um, even if there's not an officially a chair, I think if the crux of everything is to um, continue conversations with the select board, if one person is designated as that person until we get through whatever this transitional period is, um, mm -hmm. just from a, a communications perspective, I think that that would be really helpful. Yeah. It's a good idea. So did Jen on that list, did anyone volunteer for that kind of a role? Uh, you know, I, I didn't even really pull out that part of the role because I kind of figured that was something that was um, so central to being the chair that that's not something you could necessarily give away. Mm -hmm. um, How about Amelia? Because you, you and Jen were the ones that made a lot of with your statements for the listening. What would the role be? Would you um, 
clarify it exactly what, or Katie, maybe you would, could you repeat uh, what you think would be the qualifications or the? Um, I just th think a lot of what you described for next steps are ongoing communication with select board members. And I, I worry that if that person transitions every month, um, it, it won't be productive. So I envision it just this group picking one person who would for the next, I don't know, three months communicate. You know, once you send this letter with the, the items about your role and the items for next steps for the initiative, who is the point person to follow up with on those things from this group? I got to tell you guys, I'm really afraid to volunteer for this. The next month at work, the courts are opening up and I am still doing the food pantry two days a week. So I'm having to cram the rest of my job into three days. I'm really struggling to kind of keep up with all of this. Um, I, I certainly don't, um, I, I really want to stay in this conversation and help get us to the next place, but I definitely can't do it by myself. I have relationships with some of the select board members already, so I'm happy to help out. That would be great, Tina. Thank you. You and I um, maybe just talk. I just need more information about just because this is my first meeting. <laughs> uh, yes. If we can talk offline about um, <laughs> the challenges you're facing and what needs to happen. Yeah. That'd be and great. just kind of nail that so that I can, you know specific roles and responsibilities, I'm, that's fine. That would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Yeah. Thank you. OK, so are we right now? Am I writing one email to Mo that has the three, um, the three things that we're asking for specifically for our committee, and then separately the three the three ideas that have come out of the initiative that we think are the, are the we would recommend the board focus on as they um, unroll the initiative. Do we have to vote on those? We did on the first three, but. Sure. OK, so I, I think Julie, tell me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> according to my notes that they recommendations that we were making to the select board um, that they um, prioritize in working with the need um we need to come up with a better title for this one too it's uh the needham united against racism initiative would be um one would be to fast track the meeting to launch the network with um Project Over Zero, so that would be the, the Community Response and Resilience Network. Two would be to pursue a town audit, equity audit, um, done by uh, an independent third party. And then three would be to uh, develop protocols for a protocol for the Needham Human Rights Committee to hear and respond to complaints of racism and bias here in Needham. I don't know if we're asking them to develop the protocols. I think we develop the protocols, but I think we want to be able to do that. So empower the Human Rights Committee to develop protocols to do that? Yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay, I, I move that we, uh, that we approve these three recommendations that Jen read. I'll second. second. Yep. <laughs> Have it, Julie. <laughs> okay, so we will do a another roll call vote. Um, Amelia Klein. Yes. Uh, Julie Venables. Yes. Marlene Schultz. Yes. Cynthia Ganung. Yes. Jared Bizzuto. Yes. Sorry, Jared. Yes. Did you say yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, Sophia Dedek? Yes. 
Ashok Mehta? Yes. And Tina Burgos? Yes. Great. And um, Jennifer Howard is also voting yes. Okay. So it passes unanimously. Passes unanimously. So do we think that these have to go into two separate communications or can they go in the same one? Same why one. Not, why not the same one? It's the okay. same one. At the meeting on August 6th, the Human Rights Committee approved the following, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So right. someone volunteered. I don't think you have to write that, Jen, do you? Well, I think Julie was going to send me her magic words for the first one. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can write write up all this stuff since I have to do it for the minutes anyway, and just send that part of it to you to that would be copy huge. paste. Yeah. Great. That will help Jen, right? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. And then um, we need a chair for the next month if we're we're following that. That Tina has graciously, wonderfully given us the. The inspiration for going forward that she's taken on the communicating with select board. So we need someone who will at least be the convener, the agenda setter, so forth. I think it would be the first three months. Why don't we do that? Even better. To spend time at every meeting. I would be willing to do September. Oh, when you said the next three months, I thought you meant someone do it for three months. No, you one month at a time. Thank you. Okay, and so what, what was oh, being asked? Oh, okay, well, <laughs> oh God, three months. And hopefully within that period of time, um, we will have more people on the committee and, and things will determine what, uh, what our status is and, and uh, how much work we can get done as a committee. So I would be willing to do the first three months, September, Great. October, November, but Wonderful. not beyond. Not beyond. Yes. Great. And so the, the expectation is that, um, that this person or that you, Amelia, will help, will, will set the agenda and run the meeting or is that is that more than what you are thinking you're volunteering for? No, that, that sounds, I'm in consultation <laughs> with others. <laughs> or maybe. Um, Agenda and run the meeting. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, that you said set the agenda and run the meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Speaking of that, um, I was gonna try to set up the, the meetings you know, going forward, and you were going to talk to Sandy about that, or I don't, or maybe Katie. I mean, what do we, Katie? Normally, what we have, what I have done for the last number of years, is I go to, maybe it's Louise. Can't remember who I do it with, um, and I set up our meetings because they were always in person for the third Thursday, unless there was a school vacation. And then I did it another Thursday so that I had a room and we had been meeting um, in town hall. Now that we're all on zoom, how do we do it? What, how do we do that? And um, cause I said, I'd be willing to do that piece. Great. Um, and yeah, that would be really helpful. Um, it, because of zoom, if you want to connect with Sandy, and myself, because um, we have access to run this in a way that um, Louise doesn't. <laughs> so um, we can make sure that we know your full schedule. And then on the back end, we can make sure to set the webinar up each month and get you guys your panelists invites. OK, and so I just so I will take that on that I will um, set the dates by looking at calendar and um, and figuring that out for um, September through June. And are we still going to be meeting on Thursdays? Is there any reason why we might change? Um, Cynthia, I think you had some conflict. Yeah, but I think when people sign up for the committee, they're asked if they have the Thursdays. Right. That third Thursday. So it wouldn't be that easy. Oh, I see. Okay. And that's my own personal one. And I just wanted to know whether the time will be the six o'clock time because of staff requirements for 
being part of the hosting or whether the evening later evening time would be happening. It's just in terms of my own planning, I'm not asking for a change. Yeah, so Katie, and generally we always met 7.30 to 9-ish. So can we request that or is that not possible? Um, I, I will be staffing this for the foreseeable future and I'm happy to do that. So pick the time you guys would prefer. Okay, okay, I'll, okay. I, I'll take care of all this, you guys. You don't have to think about it. Is it any, does it, is there anybody that would rather keep it earlier or is going back to 7.30 okay for folks? 7.30 is definitely much better for me, but I don't know how everybody else. Um, Ashok, you, you. Um... Yeah, 7.30 is much better for me too. Me too. Julie? Yeah, and no surprise appearances by children if it's at 7.30. <laughs> and Tina, is it good for you? Yeah, that's fine. Either one works. Okay. And Jen, you prefer 7.30, right? I do. Okay, good. And okay. Katie can do it. Okay. Yes. Happy to. I have to hop off because I'm holding everyone up for dinner. If that's okay. <laughs> but um, I will pass on all the the stuff to you as soon as I can, Jen. Thank you so much, Julie. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Feels right. like we got a lot done. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah, can we call for adjournment? Uh, Katie, oh. could I ask Katie? Katie, will you be the Zoom person for all the meetings? The chair or temporary chair doesn't have to conduct, do the technology. You don't have to worry about that at all. I'll cover it. <laughs> and this was my first one and it was not as painful as I thought. So I'm, oh, don't worry about you. it. <laughs> and thank you, Katie. I think uh, you have clarified some things for us. Thank you very much for your voice yep. is important. Thank do you. we have to vote to adjourn? Yes. I move we adjourn. <laughs> second. I second. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> do we have to do another roll call vote? Yes. <laughs> Technically, yes. Technically, yes. Okay. Amelia? Yes. <laughs> Cynthia? Yes. Jared? Yes. Ashok? Yes. Tina? Yes. Sophia? Yes. And Marlene, you made the motion, right? And yes. Jen <laughs> also votes yes. I think that carries unanimously. And Julie had to leave. <laughs> Okay, we're going to give her a yes. <laughs> okay. Thank right. you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.